understand how to build websites. Basically it's a starting point. Uh, a lot of people ask to learn how to make websites or internet based applications and they don't understand the complexities of it. There is a saying you have to learn to walk before you can run so this is a starting point to help understand that. The internet is a very complicated machine. It has simple coding but it's the integration and the actual manipulation of this coding that can make it more complicated. So what I'm going to do over these set of uh, videos and tutorials is to show you how to learn some HTML and CSS but it's at the basic level and then later on we'll go towards more complex uh, HTML and CSS. Okay so we'll move on. There's some terminology you have to get used to. Uh, these are all kind of acronyms or abbreviations that you have to learn. So I'm just going to skip through some of those for now to get you used to the idea because I'll be using them in the videos and I want you to get used to the idea of what they mean. WWW is the obvious one. Most people know this. It stands for the uh, World Wide Web. This is the actual uh, place where the internet exists. Uh, it's also the governing body, W3, uh, for the World Wide Web. Okay. It's basically found at the most of uh, URLs, uh, which is probably the next thing. URL, that stands for Universal Resource Locator. Basically it's a linking system that uh, the internet uses to find one page to another. You have to remember that most of the internet is uh, virtual. None of it exists. It's all data on a computer, so it has to find some way of actually finding paths to these uh, places. You can't just go to a library and pick up a book, for instance. Yeah, so these are what you called URLs. HTTP, that stands for Hypertext Transfer Protocol. This is the language used. Uh, by the internet to actually make uh, web pages work. Uh, basically hypertext is a way of actually making linking systems within a page go to another page or a specific point in a page using uh, a transfer protocol which allows it to find that location. HTML, again this is the actual page language. It actually stands for hypertext markup language and we'll go through that in more detail in a another video but basically that's what it stands for HTML and CSS that stands for cascading style sheets and I'll get to a kind of point to make you understand why it's called cascading style sheets is obviously the way you style your web page once upon a time it was very uh, dull and boring the way web pages uh, looked and now you can have quite a lot of excitement and style involved in your uh, pages and this is how it can be done it can be done in in, in applications such as Dreamweaver as well, but uh, nowadays most good uh, designers use cascading style sheets external to the HTML to lay, enable better, more advanced styling. WYSIWYG. This is a term that's used uh, especially with applications such as Dreamweaver. Uh, what it stands for is what you see is what you get. Saying that actually it's not necessarily true most of the time. They say Dreamweaver is a WYSIWYG application but it's not. Uh, I've actually done things inside Dreamweaver and it doesn't display very well inside Dreamweaver. You put it onto the internet and it works fine. So in general terms it is a WYSIWYG program. Basically it has a design window. You put things in the design window, you press preview and it shows you what it looks like on the internet. As long as you've built everything inside Dreamweaver, then it should work because as you design it in the design area, then you know that it's not making an issue because it's all styled and corrected inside Dreamweaver. But if you make a page outside Dreamweaver, put it inside Dreamweaver and it doesn't work, doesn't mean it doesn't work on the internet. Okay, so be careful of this. Okay, what we have as well, the way you look at the internet is using things called browsers and there's several different browsers are out there. I've listed five of the main ones uh, which you should really install on your computers. Uh can be a little bit of an issue if you're a Mac user because uh, Internet Explorer stopped uh, 
working on Macintoshes at version 5.4, I think it was. So what you have to do if you are a web developer is to install either Bootcamp, which is the PC partition, or to have uh, a, a crossover platform, uh, an emulator, to allow you to run these uh, browsers. Saying that, most of the emulators I've looked at uh, don't support Internet Explorer 8, but you tend to find that Internet Explorer 8 does show web pages almost exactly the same as they do on Macintoshes now. Okay, but anyway, the browsers that we will be using and looking at are Netscape. This is the first one. It is still around. Um, however, not many people use it, but it can create some errors, so it's well worth um, installing just in case people are using it and you need to adjust your pages for Netscape. The next one, the dreaded uh, Internet Explorer which creates most of the issues on uh, internet design. I'm sure if you ask anybody who does web design, they'll say Internet Explorer uh, platform from hell. Okay, so install that because if you're going to have problems, it will be through Internet Explorer and you're not going to be able to resolve them unless you can preview it. Next one is Safari, Macintosh's uh, answer to Internet Explorer. Again, in one sense, it's great uh, as far as a browser goes, um, I've never found anything that I've designed creating an issue in Safari, but then again that is a problem because cause it looks so perfect in Safari and then you look at it in other browsers. If you don't look at it in other browsers, you're thinking everything's going well, and it's not. So you have to be careful, uh, but it is a good browser. Firefox, becoming very popular, has lots of extensions and uh, plugins to help designers for web pages. Uh, so it's well worth having, but it's also because it's the popular one and cross-platform. Saying that, all these uh, browsers are cross-platform apart from Internet Explorer. And finally, the new one, which is uh, Google Chrome. Again, they say it's the fastest one, but I've heard that it is fast on PCs, but it seems to not be so fast on Macintoshes. But again, it's the new... Uh, trend for people to use Chrome because it's fashionable uh, so it's well worth having on your computer and with the popularity of Google it's well worth having just in case it does become a standard okay so there are your browsers I'm going to go through a list of the tags that you use uh, in HTML not all of them I'm going to do that in the next uh, session but uh, basically what you have with uh, HTML is a piece of code you can recognize it if you look at the code by the fact it's in these what's known as diamond brackets and there's an example this is your body tag which uh, enables you to design things that will actually appear on the internet anything that's inside your body tag will appear on uh, the actual web page on your screen that's the syntax for it encapsulation or encapsulating uh, pieces of code basically means anything that will appear on the screen has to be within a start tag and an end tag like so the only differential between those two is the fact that there's a forward slash at the start of the end tag just after the first diamond bracket like so and an example of that would be this that's your full tagging structure for your body okay moving on something called nesting. This is a way that you can actually build up elements on your web page or in your header section. And what it does is it has coding inside your start and end tag. Okay, an example of that would be, let me just let, wait for it to load, like this for instance. You have the, like the previous one, the body tag, which sets up your web page. And we'll talk about divs later, but a div is basically like a paragraph or a container to allow you to put things in and then the hello is the actual text that appears on screen so you'll notice it's all nested together in a structure that allows the closing tags to brackets the essential points web page right basically web pages are structured in two way uh, two p parts there's the head section and then there's what's known as the body section and you can see it's as much as that kind of uh, separation. The head section is written like this, not 
literally that far apart. This is just basically for the uh, presentation, and it contains what's known as metadata, basically invis mostly invisible uh, information that can help with search engines and uh, descriptions and formatting and language uh, definition, etc., etc. We'll talk about that again more later. Then what we do is we have what's known as the body section, which is the main area where your design appears. And as we've seen before, this is the syntax for that. What happens inside there is what's known as the design. Uh, anything that's appearing on screen is classed as a design and it will appear in the body section. Okay, the internet then. 